And welcome to the Policy Subcommittee of the Brockton School Committee for Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021. Uh, our agenda for this Policy Subcommittee, uh, review of swimming programs, uh, review of the Brockton Public Schools District Calendar, any other business, and then adjournment. Um, so the first item is the review of the swimming programs. And will you be? Yes. All I'll right, so I guess. Thomas, the floor is yours. Thank you. So um, in our discussion following up um, from our last meeting and obviously with the tragedy, uh, the horrible tragedy of our two students at South Middle School, um, following up with that and also recent tragedies around the state and country of um, young children and, and even adults drowned and from not knowing how to swim. Um, so tonight we invited um, the um, Director of Wellness K-12, Nick Lee, Director of Health K-12, Dennis Genich. We also have Michelle Zachary, who's the Assistant Principal at the Hancock School, but longtime swim coach and also longtime pool supervisor for the Brockton Community School programs, not only the inside pool, but also the outside pool, the Manning Pool next to the AZF rink. So I'm going to have them join us and just go over the programs we do offer uh, and um, how we can recommend expanding those and then how the committee can talk about um, you know, providing scholarships. I know the mayor has talked about this from his office and um, you know, there is money in our budget to start to offer free swimming programs for, for our students. So they're here to join us. So I think it's, um, I'll, I'll ask either, Nick, you wanna jump in first? Is Michelle for, I'm sorry, Michelle, you're first. Hi. Hi. Okay, um, so our, our aquatics programs, we most recently just finished our guarding course. Um, we had 11 new certifications, 18 recertifications. Um, we're getting ready for our summer aquatics program, which is at the um, Manning Pool and the indoor um, O'Neill Natatorium. In those two, at those two pools, we have um, the special education department's extended school year that, that attends the pool, um, extended day, mini fun camp, Brockton After Dark, Power Scholars, and Gilmore Footprints. Um, the, in, the inside pool, we have uh, the community school, summer aquatics, extended day, junior boxer camp, and raise up camp. So we have many, many camps and students that come through the two pools. Um, for our summer aquatics, um, it's run along with Get Ready. There's a focus on swim and dive instruction. We have three sessions. The first one is a two-week session, and then we have two one-week sessions. It's a focus on swim and dive instruction, water safety, dry land activities, and workouts, and then we have a culminating um, swim meet at the end. This also runs during the year. We do, we do all of that lessons and water safety during the year also. We use, when the instructors write their lesson plans, we use the Red Cross Learn to Swim course progressions. Um, it goes from water adjustment, from entering and exiting the water, um, all the way to stroke refinement. And that runs during the year also. And then additionally, during the school year, we have a, uh, it's called the SNAP program. It's Special Needs Aquatic Program. And that is specifically for our special needs population. And we also offer an advanced swim, which when students um, phase out of the lessons, it's kind of a bridge between lessons and the swim team. And then adult aquatics are offered also during the school year. And I think they run during the summer also. For this summer, uh, as you were talking about earlier, we tried to brainstorm some ideas. I talked to uh, Melissa Shepard and I, all, during Brockton After Dark, we do offer free lessons from our guards, instructors, um, to the students who attend the uh, programs for Brockton After Dark. We've never done it for extended day before. 
However, we're going to add a, um, at the Manning pool, there's a, a rotation of lifeguards. So there will be a, another rotation, which will be a lesson rotation. And I have asked Melissa to have teachers come with a list of names of students who um, will take a lesson that day. And it will be two short 20 minute lessons, I think. Um, and we want them to come prepared with a list of students' names because once they start playing, it's hard to pull them for a lesson, um, especially the K-1-2 students who want to play in the pool. Um, I think that's, that's it for our programs. So any questions for Michelle? Uh, hi, Michelle. It's, it, hi, how you doing? It's Tom Minicello. I just want to uh, thank you for trying to fill those slots. That's basically what the school committee wants to do. Any, any available and open um, uh, space, we want to utilize that and, and really sign up any child that really needs to learn the essentials of how to save themselves and how to swim and, and how to, you know, um, deal with the water. I mean, uh, the, you know, the, the, the water uh, is a fun thing, but it's a very dangerous thing if you if you can't uh, if you can't wade if you can't float. Um, so. Anything that people can do out there, any, any people out there who know of a child that um, you know, needs to swim uh, and you know that their family you know, just doesn't know how to swim, you know, please uh, recommend that family or that child because um, you know, it might not be today, but down the road, uh, something, something bad could be avoided. Uh, so appreciate everything you do. We do, I don't know if the summer schedule was shared with you, but we, the pool is open, both pools are open from uh, 8.15, 8.30 to the Manning runs until almost nine when Brockton After Dark runs and the indoor pool runs until about three. And we, I don't have a count right now, but there are hundreds and hundreds of students that come through um, the programs and we always we always try to talk to them about water safety and and we always encourage them to attend our lessons I I think our first session is already full um, for the summer so that's a good thing but it's also we have many more people that need to um, that want to sign up Thank anybody you. okay any other questions uh, Cynthia has her hand raised oh, on the Cynthia I'm sorry no worries. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, you mentioned the lesson rotations, how they're two short 20 minute lessons. Are those for specific age groups or it doesn't matter your age? So that's separate from the lessons that we um, do through community schools. So this is just an opportunity. When extended day comes to the pool, they bring um, K and one, and then there's a on Monday and Wednesday, and then two, three, and four come on Tuesday, Thursday. So there, that range of students is at the pool for an hour and a half. When they get there, it takes them a little while to get in. They'll have some time to play in the water. We'll do the two 20 minute sessions. So that's kind of, um, it depends who's at the pool that day. So we've never done that. This is just an opportunity for those students who are not enrolled in a lesson um, to have an exposure to a swim lesson, a water safety lesson, how to get in and out of a pool, when to enter water with an adult there or in a lifeguard or a lifeguard and never without one. So that just those things, that those experiences that they are not signed up for in the regular aquatics program. We want to give them the opportunity. So it would be whoever's at the pool that day. All right, thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Hello, Melissa. Tim Sullivan here. I was wondering about scholarships, or is there a fee for these? Or is the scholarships available for the swimming programs? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't hear. <clears throat> I was, I was wondering if the scholarships are available for people who cannot afford the swimming class. Sorry. I know that the guidance department does issue some, um, 
scholarships for, I, I don't know who that goes through. I think it goes through community schools, maybe. They coordinate with them. So I know there are a few. And also, um, Kathy Smith, year, I think in 2012, um, started a scholarship for a an exceptional swimmer who, um, you know, was going to swim the whole year, and we choose one right. student per year, to, and we pay, community schools pays for them to do a year's worth of lessons. So, so those, is, are the, those are the few that I know about. Are there scholarships available if somebody can't afford it? Yeah, so what happens is um, there's so much scholarship money, it goes to the adjustment counselors through John Snellgrove, through community schools, and uh, they recognize students. And again, this is not just swimming specific. It goes towards um, any activity the student's interested in. So if there's a student who um, at, I don't know, at the unknown school that wants to um, go to a basketball camp then and they can't afford it, uh, they would get a scholarship to go to either get ready or the raise up, and then part of that, they have a swimming component. So, um, but there's not there's scholarships offered for every. Um, there's not enough to kev to cover all um, students, but the scholarships do go through the adjustment councils, um, and it's based on obviously family need. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, point of information: if, <clears throat> if there's a city resident that's looking to learn how to swim and they can't afford it, the, the city will subsidize that. Uh, I have money under the youth task force. I would, I we would pay that. If someone wants to learn how to swim and they're ready, willing, and able to do it, money's not going to be an obstacle. We'll take care of that. That's good to hear. Thank, thank you, you, Michelle. Mayor. And thank you, Mayor, for, for stepping up and, and, you know, letting everybody know about that. That's huge. All right. Anyone else? All right, Michelle, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, next up, we have um, Director of Wellness, uh, Nick Lee, is going to talk about the swimming, um, the pool here at Brockton High that takes place during phys ed classes. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, yes, we have uh, a class aerobic water fitness at Brockton High. We, uh, it's basically broken up into four units. Um, the first and fourth unit is fitness exercise, activity, and games. The real, the real important piece of the curriculum is unit two and three, which is um, kids will learn all the strokes and um, the risk management, the safety, getting in and out, emergency situations, um, AED and CPR. Um, before the pandemic, uh, I had a teacher, Kevin Rooney, go out and get certified to be able to certify our kids at Brockton High with um, an AED cert and a CPR cert. Uh, so that piloted last year to be put in for next year. Uh, the only issue I had with it was um, the amount of time that I needed to certify those kids. So what we had to do was just offer the certification after school to kids that wanted to get certified. But in the future, I'm, I'm hoping to any kid that wants to take this class, be able to certify them in AED and, and uh, CPR. Um, we have uh, four periods a day uh, we offer. So we can reach about 450 kids a year. Uh, grades 10 through 12. Um, the freshmen all take the same intro to wellness class. That's why we don't offer the swimming to freshmen just yet. Uh, we offer it 10 to 12. Um, and there's about 20 students per class. Um, that's state law. So we um, generally, obviously, uh, start in the shallow end with most kids. I mean, I taught swimming myself at Brockton High, so it was always easier for us to teach when the kids were all on the same level, which is what I try to preach to the guidance counselors. We want, really want kids that want to learn how to swim. Um, it really doesn't help us much if we've got half a class that are, that are um, advanced and half a class that's beginners we try to really get all the beginners in the classes working with the guidance and um students themselves generally we we get a good number of kids that 
uh, come to us learning, wanting to learn how to swim. And the majority of them uh, all say similar things about their parents not being able to swim. Uh, and that's, that's a problem as well. We touched upon that with um, Sharon and John Snellgrove the other day when we were talking to the why. A lot of these kids' parents aren't able to swim as well. So um, most of the time when we get kids into these classes, they really haven't even been in a pool much. So um, it's an important class at Brockton High, and we're looking to constantly expand and evolve um, every year with this class. I mean, obviously with the tragedies we've had recently, I mean, this is really on the forefront and important and it's always been important to me. So, um, I used to teach it when I was there and I really enjoyed it. And we have a lot to offer with this curriculum. Um, the teachers that I have that teach it, uh, swimming there are very good. So it's, it's, um, although tragic the last few weeks, um, I think we can, really improve this curriculum and improve what we're offering in the city. Um, can I ask, I, I know my understanding is that there's an option, and I apologize if I'm mistaken about this, that there's, there's an option for kids to test out of having to do this as part of the curriculum, the swimming part? There's an option to test out. If there's an option to test out, I don't really know what that is. Uh, we used to have okay. um, the testing out portion when I when I was teaching it, but the curriculum has since changed a little bit where it was a lot more to offer than just um, the being able to test out of it. Um, students can, can opt out of it if they play a sport, uh, but testing out of it, we really don't, we really don't allow that. Um, right now, uh, simply because there are other things we offer within our curriculum as far as certifying kids AED, um, CPR cert. Uh, also, what, what, what I try to keep um, within the class is always having either someone from the swim team or somebody that's really advanced in the pool because um, we're outside of the pool teaching it. Uh, so it's always easier to have an advanced swimmer in the pool with beginners. Um, so testing out, I would say, doesn't really exist anymore. No. Yeah, there used to be a test to test out of it when it was right. mandatory for every student. Okay. And now it's it's tough to make it mandatory for every student because we just don't have the, num the enough room with gotcha. the 20 students per. So the mandatory test out is hasn't been used in, I think, when I met with Nick, when we looked, we talked about it last time, it's been about close to yeah, eight years now. I think it was now. before my time. Yeah, it's been about eight years now. I think it, a couple years after I left this department. Here. All right. I don't know where I saw that, and I know that it was talked about in oh, a yeah, meeting. Oh, yeah, there was definitely a test out. Okay. And there, but there's still... Okay. Yeah, the test out was... Okay, but now if you're involved in athletics, you don't have to... If you are an athlete, you can opt out of two. Uh, you have to take phys ed for three semesters. That's the requirement to graduate from the high school. You have to take and pass three semesters. Um, you have to take it as a freshman. All, all freshmen have to take phys ed. Um, and then if you're an athlete uh, who plays either a JV or varsity sport, 10th, 10, 10th grade through 12th grade, um, that covers two of your semesters for phys ed. So okay. Two seasons would cover. That doesn't get you out of the swimming stuff, although it sounds like there isn't really a, a swimming requirement any longer because of basically the numbers. We'd yeah, agree. it went from, um, at that time, there were 12 phys ed teachers, now there's seven. Okay. So you can't get the numbers through. Um, all every kid, uh, student at Brockton High School, there's no way to get them right. And we, we, I mean, there's only 20, 20 kids in a class at once and right. six periods in a day, so we really can only service 240 kids a semester, right. um, within that pool, you know, okay. especially with beginners, we're all always going to be in the, sh in the shallow end, so being able to service uh, ideally, you'd love to be able to service 4,500 kids, um. But as of right now, 
it's about 240 kids a semester. Right. I mean, I think the goal of, of I probably, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think we're, what we're probably aiming for here is to try to at least create the opportunity if, if we can't mandate it for whatever reason, to have some minimal level of skill uh, in this area to try to avoid some of these tragedy, tragedies that have continued to happen, not just here, but in other communities too. I mean, every time, I feel like every time I wake up, there's another story about uh, you know somebody drowning. So, um, okay, all right. Uh, anybody else have any comment, question? Mrs. Sullivan, please. Um, I just wanted to um, make a comment that there's four pages of offerings here for swimming. So there's loads of offerings here. And I just want to thank the su Superintendent Thomas and Mayor Sullivan because with their efforts, we've been able to open up more opportunities for kids to learn how to swim. So thank you. And I think as we get through this um, summer and into next year, I think we'll look, we will we'll have Soraya DeBarrows come in and Nick, and we can look at options for um, these free programs where we make them you know, I know community schools uses the pool often, um, but there's different things we can do at night f that we can offer to parents. Um, Saturdays, offer, you know, I know there's swim lessons on Saturdays, but we can look to expand those to include more people. And we can always talk about a mandatory um, program at Brockton High before you graduate. You know, it, it, graduating um, and making, like credits are internal, Mm -hmm. um, so as a school committee, as you can vote to put back a mandatory either test out. The only the issue is making swimming mandatory is it's difficult because we went from 66 minute classes now to 53, mm -hmm. which is tough for, you know, kids to change, get in the pool, do what you need to do, then change and then pass to your next class. So that it's hard to make it mandatory now during the day. But there are different things we could do. Um, and we could be creative about making sure that every student that graduates from Brockton High knows how to float and do the doggy battle. <laughs> right, at, at minimum. I mean, yeah. literally. At, at the very minimum, exactly. Just that minimal level of, of and you're not going to avoid every tragedy from ever happening again, unfortunately. I know that's the reality. But if we've at least tried to make sure that every kid that comes out of this high school has that minimal that minimum level of skill hopefully it's a you know they've got a shot if they get into some water whereas if they can't even do that it, you know um so maybe it makes sense to have some ongoing discussion on this you know we've, we're certainly not going to resolve that tonight any other comment mayor yeah i mean i went here 33 years ago and when i played football we, we didn't we didn't have to do swimming right but then I was on the swim team, and Mark O'Reilly, you know, who was an awesome guy, tried to get anybody and everybody in the pool to just do exactly what you said, Mike, just to be able to save yourself, right? Doggy paddle, float on your back, whatever it is. Use your, your clothes as, as, as a floating device as well. So I think we really have to give a strong consideration. Um, I, we need to. I think we owe that to the boys and girls in Brockton Public Schools. So. Uh, as long as I'm mayor, I'm gonna I'm gonna work with Mike and, and this school committee to try to advocate and and save lives that's what we need to do thank you thank and you again it's it's if we put things k to 12 even pre-k to 12 then you do it for all students and then there'll be less kids at the high school over time that's gonna they're gonna need to take a mandatory right cast off because they they would have learned to swim when they're young and it's obviously it's important to know how to swim at every age right uh, i agree if we've yeah put those in at an earlier age then maybe like you said there'll be less numbers when by the time they get to the high school where this is you know something that we have to worry about but um, all right well again we can have an ongoing discussion about that anybody else just also say yes we are having a discussion remember that we have more than just Brockton High so the mandatory decisions of high school taking swimming you have to consider how the pools are champion to be able to access the pool and and right. be able to participate in those lessons so um, when we're looking at what is developed 
we have to develop it from a broader lens. Yep. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. That's a great point. I appreciate it because we want to make sure that, like you said, the students outside of this building have the same access, you know, to that opportunity. So. All right. Mr. Vice Chairman, I, th I think we can, uh, just to follow what Sharon said, I think we can leverage our relationship with Master Soyet. They've got a great pool over there, and also Vinnie Matarano at the Y. You know, right. the Y is running our, our pools this summer, so I think we have not just the, the ability to use the pool here at Brockton High, but we can use other, and, and Mike and I can reach out and get that signed up with an MOU or an MOA. Yeah, let's get all hands on deck, and, you know, maybe collectively between all of that, we can, you know, be able to get get enough space um, anyone else mr. Rodriguez just to touch base on just because you're an athlete and you play a sport in school doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to swim because I played ball and I there was a plenty of guys that didn't know how to swim until this day so I think right. that needs to be corrected as well well this the, the opt-out for um, had nothing to do with swimming it was basically PE when P yeah it's about getting out of PE the issue was Again, Brockton High used to have 16 phys ed teachers. It went to 12, and then it went to six, and now it's at seven. So it's impossible for every student to have phys ed every year, every semester. Right. So a way, and this goes back 15 years, a way to get kids into phys ed um, who needed the physical activity was to allow sophomores, juniors, and seniors who played a sport to use those two for phys ed credits it wasn't about getting rid of swimming it was basically right. and it was able to open up space open up space in in classes for kids that actually weren't getting physical activity after school because they weren't in sports so that was the reason for it. it wasn't to get them out of swimming it was basically to open up the numbers in phys ed because it just with the number of teachers there was no way to service at that time 4700 students and there's still no way to service 4200 with the number of teachers having Mike, I would say to that as I would say to that is uh, the, the, I, I mean, really, Tony, there's like I'd say maybe five or six kids a year that opt out with that waiver. Um, most of them, I mean, they're all athletes. They like phys ed, so most of them take it. Um, I see maybe I don't even think I see that many. Maybe three or four waivers on a yearly basis. Not that much. Not that many at all. I loved phys ed. I don't know why people would opt out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, Nick. Um, Dennis, you with us? Yes, sir. So just um, if you can um, just give us an update on our health classes as far as students in the classroom, uh, what's done around water safety? Absolutely. Uh, at each grade level, uh, Water safety is embedded in our safety and injury prevention unit, and it's a couple of lessons that is available at, at appropriately through all the grade levels. Uh, just prior to the shutdown, I was meeting with uh, Jill Stone, who was our American Red Cross Training Services representative, and um, just prior to when we shut down, we were working on a number of initiatives, including water safety. So what we're going to be doing in the health classes is it's obvious that uh, we, need, we do need to expand uh, the water safety from just a single lesson that's embedded in the injury prevention unit to uh, something that's a little more substantial and significant. So we're going to be working with the Red Cross to expand and implement water safety and water safety awareness curriculum um, with them. And that's going to include a family outreach component, all of the information that we feel like we need to get to the students it's really important that we make that information available as well to the families. As Nick said, a lot of the parents can't swim or haven't been around uh, water. And we had a great deal of uh, positive feedback with uh, doing something similar when we um, did our Sandy Hook signs of suicide awareness trainings and that information, we provided that information all translated to parents made it available to all of our families on our website and got some good feedback on that. So we'll include that as part of our curriculum. And uh, Mike, last year you gave us uh, some funding to have a Red Cross club at the high school. And they were in the process of um, hosting a blood drive before we, we ended up shutting down. But they will be um, at the forefront of our public service and uh, media campaign at the high school to get some signage out and get some uh, 
public service announcements and messages out uh, to, to the community and to our families. Yeah, and, and it's been a few years now. We also, when you're thinking about water safety, you also have to make sure we educate students and families um, as far as ice. Um, as you know, um, it was probably four, four years ago now, a uh, tragedy, a uh, student at the Plouffe School um, who fell through the ice, um, was in Salisbury, um, over um, near Plymouth Street, yep. and um, obviously um, passed uh, another tragedy. Um, so I know uh, we've spent time on, uh, and it's not only about swimming, it's about um, children knowing the safety around um, staying off ice um, during the winter months. Right. And okay. the dangers of that. Yeah, and that's equally as important, right? Yeah, I because mean, even, I mean, even if you know how to swim, it's not a good situation to No, and to that's be a completely in. different yeah. issue than, than the swimming issue and, and has different challenges. Like you said, even if you know how to swim, that, that may not be enough in that situation. So, um, yeah, all right. Well, so we definitely need to talk more about that going forward between now and... Yeah, I know that Dennis has put that into his health classes as well, right. but... I know that when that happened, Superintendent Smith at the time, um, we did a big e outreach. There were uh, things that went on through health classes and at schools as far as, right. you know, uh, staying off the ice in the winter months. So that will continue, and we can beef that up as well. Okay. Excellent. Anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, Mr. Minicello. I'll just say that, unfortunately, we are not going to be able to prevent bad things from happening but it's good to know that people in this city um, care and that we're taking some steps to try to you know prepare our children better prepare our children in case of you know they run into these dangers like you said ice that's hypothermia I don't care if you're the best swimmer in the world but if you're if you're in deep cold ice cold water it's not going to take long before that overtakes you but right. you know as a community as, as elected officials we all care the school system and, and we're willing to do our part. And, and this is all a part of the process, being to make some proactive changes um, in the face of some very tragic you know, losses that we don't want to happen again. But we know, unfortunately, bad things can happen. So you know, I'm glad that we're all doing our part. Nope, you hit the nail on the head. There's nothing, you know, we won't be able to prevent every tragedy, but let's do everything we can. And, uh, you know, like I said, let's do everything we can to, to try and, you know, help the, the kids and even adults in the city be in the best possible position to get themselves out of these situations. And unfortunately... And one final point, the mayor's being very generous in terms of providing the funding that any child that wants to learn to swim, any family that needs that help, um, you know, he's put up, the, you know, he's, he's basically, right. you know, putting up the dough to, to save lives. So I applaud him for that. Right. And that's important because we don't want money to be the thing that stops somebody from learning how to swim. And, and I mean, it, let's face it, as, we've, as we know, it's a life-saving skill. So uh, we certainly don't want, want someone's pocketbook to be the reason they can't learn to do that. Um, anyone else? All right. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Appreciate it. All right. If there's nothing else, Thank you. I'm Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. So if there's nothing else on the swimming programs, nope, good, okay. We move on to the review of the district calendar for 21 to 22. So this was, um, we visited this a few weeks ago in policy about the wording on our, cal uh, our district calendar and also Sharon presented um, a few um, suggestions and also we'll also have a cultural calendar um, as well in the Brockton Public Schools, which is great, but I know we were looking at the wording around the, um, the holiday break um, that was always known as Christmas recess, and we know that there's several of our families that celebrate um, other holidays other than Christmas, uh, so we, want, we were looking into um, whether we call it winter recess or holiday recess, um, and I don't know if I'm missing any others on the... I know that we've we were going to change in um, you know February recess to in April recess and get away from um, calling them certain um, 
which is basically calling them exactly what they are. Um, we were changing parent conferences to family school conferences, which is, has been a recommendation and changes made um, across the state and in the country. Um, so again, to make our um, calendar more inclusive. And you know, I, I know the other days that are listed, like uh, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, um, Martin Luther King, President's Day, a lot of these are listed right from the federal holidays. Um, so I know we did, did we bring any suggestions up about those? About, was, okay. So that's where we were. I think that's where we left the discussion. I might be forgetting some, because I know we all had the discussion. So, you know, anybody else that wants to jump in, I might have missed. Because um, I know that we talked about this. It probably was about six weeks ago now. Yeah, I'll chime in. Sure, Mr. I mean, Minichello. I, yeah, we, we had a, you know, a very you know, interesting evening, and that was a... Uh, I thought an excellent idea in terms of having the, um, you know, the, the educational calendar uh, accompanying the school calendar because there are so many days and events that people are unaware of. Um, you know, I, um, you know, I'll be the first to admit that I didn't know, you know, the, the exact, uh, you know, definition of, you know, Juneteenth. I'm learning it as we go, um, and which I, you know, is now a federal holiday, and that not obviously will be noted in the calendar. Um, However, in terms of you know, inclusivity, my personal feeling is if we eliminate the traditional names, Christmas, um, Thanksgiving, those types of, of names that have been traditional uh, in, this, in this country, in this community, I, I, I think that the goal of, of sort of not creating um, division is going to do the opposite. It's going to create a huge division in this community. Um, so my feeling is that you know, I think that to have the educational or the cultural calendar accompanying our traditional calendar is a great idea because it can be used in education. But um, my personal feeling is if we eliminate the tradition, like Thanksgiving, that's an Amer as far as I'm concerned, my interpretation is that's an American holiday. That is a holiday that so many people in this country love to celebrate because it, 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 it's, it's, a, you know, it's a holiday where people get together, people, you know, friends, family, you know, getting together for a nice meal. You don't have to, it's, it's all about not buying gifts and all this stuff. It's all about a nice meal and spending time together and getting together. You know, if, if we start taking things like that off, I think that this community is going to be very divisive and not be uh, tolerant. And that's the goal that we're trying to be, is tolerant. And we're trying to be inclusive. So uh, it's like going to an, another country and saying to, to uh, you know, a community, well, you know, we, we, you need to take Ramadan off of your, you know, calendar. That is not going to happen. Right. So my feeling is, yes, I, I agree. We need to respect, you know, other people's beliefs and we need to include people. But I, I do not think that, I don't think this is going to accomplish this goal. I think that this is going to create a, a fervor in the opposite direction. And I just think that, you know, a, an accompanying calendar that, that lists all sorts of things that I don't know about and I would love to learn about. And I think that other people in this community would be very um, interested in, in terms of, you know, having it as an as a educational aid, you know, teachers, courses. I think that's a great idea, but that's my two cents worth. So I'll jump in, and, and obviously I want to give everybody who wants to an opportunity. Um, I partially agree with Mr. Minicello on this one, um, as far as Thanksgiving goes. Um, there's no other reason on the planet why we're taking a break at that point in time except for Thanksgiving. Um, and, and it is a holiday that everybody, you know, all, not everybody, but I imagine a, a huge majority of, of Americans, it's an American holiday, so I agree with everything you said about that. Uh, December winter recess, I mean, I can understand not calling it Christmas break because there are many holidays that are celebrated in the month of December. Um, holiday recess seems like a good middle ground in my opinion. Um, you know, I don't think we need to go to winter recess where we just ignore the fact that the very reason we are taking a break in December is because of the holiday season. Um, you know, so I do love the, the, the cultural calendar and, that's, and, and having it come out with this, I think is a wonderful idea. And, and again, because it provides us all opportunities to learn about ourselves. We talked about this in the last time this discussion came up of how maybe we could even you know, obviously the kids have opportunities to learn about each other through this, but even the adults in the community have an opportunity to, to learn. Um, so um, I fully support that part of it. I guess, 
you know, it's really Thanksgiving and, and the, you know, going to winter recess. I, I feel like holiday break or holiday recess um, is more of a, of a reasonable middle ground that I think would be, you know, appropriate. But um, so beyond that, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't have take issue with any of the other changes on the, on the calendar. So um, that's just my opinion, but uh, anyone else? I just had a question. So November two is the uh, is the general election. There's no school, but September fourteenth is the preliminary. Do we have we have full day that day. Fourteenth um, is that is it? What day of the week is that? It's a Tuesday. 14th. Yeah, that's a full day of school. Full day. That's when we put extra police officers on. Yep. I did ask the state about a full remote day, and that won't be allowed. It won't be. Nope. Okay. But we do what we do. Um, what we did starting. Actually, um, Miss a Miss Azak recommended it uh, a couple of years ago. Is that um, the city puts on the police officer for the polls? Yep. Um, but we hire an additional police officer that covers the school for safety. Okay. Yeah. So they're at the main normal. office. They're in the area um, to make lots. sure parking lots uh, with traffic, and then they make sure, obviously, you know, there's no other, you know, no one's going through the school. And and then we've done a good job of changing the polling locations to make them um, separate um, either in gymnasiums or in in parts of the building where the kids are not on those days on that day okay thank you superintendent yep. thank you mr chairman all right no problem anybody else want to comment on this matter is when do we need to vote on this um it should be tonight because we have, we got to get these to print. And if the committee wanted to make any amendments, such as the things that Mr. Minicello and I have discussed, how would that? Oh, we would do it. We would do it tonight. We would. And then we that wouldn't way take it could a vote. go yeah. to print. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I mean, if there's no discussion or proposed amendments, um, well, we could. Well, here's some. I, I mean, I'll offer some. So basically. You have, um, you know, I, I, we can call it holiday winter recess. Um, you know, Christmas Day is still a federal holiday. Right. I mean, you can list Christmas. Mean, you can list the exact voted approved federal holidays on the calendar without calling it Christmas recess. You could put on here the twenty fifth Christmas Day, which is a recognized federal holiday. Right. Um, and that you could change instead of calling it Christmas recess, you would make it, you know, holiday recess, a winter holiday recess, and then you could list the 25th as Christmas Day because all other federal holidays are listed on this calendar. Just like Thanksgiving is a federal holiday, and right. I mean, so basically, all the federal holidays are called out, and again, when they change those because there is talk of changing Columbus Day, uh, um, like they just added Juneteenth uh, right. as a federal holiday. All federal holidays, you could call those out so they're recognized, which most of them all are now. All of them are recognized now on here as federal holidays. Right, and that takes care of the But you just holidays. don't have to, yeah, exactly. And I'm saying that then that you would be able to, Christmas Day would still be listed under here as Christmas Day the 25th, but you could change the break to... Well, I'm not Holiday worried about break. Christmas or not Christmas because we also have Hanukkah in December yeah. and we have, I mean, what's that? Kwanzaa and I mean, there's any that's number. That's why the break should be called. Holiday break. Holiday that, break. That's why, I, that if, was my point. It's not about any specific holiday, at least for me. It's personally for me Oh, about, absolutely. The break is absolutely about the It's a month where we are the celebrating holidays. these major religious holidays, you know. Anyway, but to Mr. Menachello's point, Christmas is a legal federal holiday, and it could be listed as such on here. But I agree that the holiday, the, the actually break, should change to holiday break or, or winter okay. break, one of the two. All right. So I'll make a motion. I, I, I guess I'd like to see. Uh, before I make a motion, I'd like to see you know, what you know, we, we'd be voting on uh, if we're going to make some changes. Um, 
because I mean, you know, I, I, I know, you know, that, so the 25th of December is a federal holiday, but that's not listed here. Um, um, but other holidays are listed here. Um, yeah, that would have to change. Too. It never was is listed before. A federal uh, is it a federal? Is Thanksgiving a federal holiday? I'm, I'm not I believe sure. so. Yeah. 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 And is Thanksgiving listed here at all? Or no. No. You know, I used to make fun of Kathy Saroy with glasses, and now I need them, and I need probably a more powerful pair <laughs> here. Holy boy. Yeah, I this mean. It's so small. <laughs> Let's see. So is November. We need some kind of a, a motion, um, and we are starting to run into the regular meeting as well. No, Thanksgiving is not listed here, right, Mr. Superintendent? It, no, it's, it's not. Okay, it's not here. Okay. So we would list the, the legal hol the all federal legal holidays would be listed on here. Okay. Right. Right now that's on here is just November recess. Yes. We could do a, um, a new one and send it out Friday. I mean, somebody has to make a motion, and it can't be me as the chair. So, <laughs> I'll make a motion because we we gotta we gotta follow Thank up its rules. I'm gonna make a motion uh, relative to what's before us, uh, relative to uh, the calendar for November. I would ask that uh, Thanksgiving legal holiday recognized by the federal government be incorporated there. Uh, I would still keep um, November recess there. Relative to December, I would have the 25th as recognized Christmas Day federal holiday. And I would make a motion to change the word winter recess to state as holiday recess for the term of the 23rd of December through the 31st of December. That's the form of a motion. Motion. Second. All right, we have a motion on the floor properly seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, and, and if we identify other federal holidays, are we going to, that's going to be part of the motion to add it? Yeah, I think those are the only ones we missed. St. Patrick's Day isn't federally recognized yet, is it here? No. No, no. not yet? There should be a oh. notation. Though, <laughs> shouldn't there? Um, no. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just revise that, Mr. Sullivan, if you mind re redacting your... Withdraw the second. Okay, so my motion will stand with the revision that I'm going to ask the superintendent to add any and all federal recognized holidays to be stated on the calendar thereon. That's my motion. I'll second that. I have a question. So Columbus Day will still be listed as... Columbus Day yet yeah, hasn't been officially changed by the federal by the federal government. So, um, okay. So we have a motion by Mayor Sullivan, properly seconded by Mr. Sullivan. Is there any further discussion on the motion? And the only thing I we will continue to go forward with our cultural calendar. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, no, that's no. Great. Just, just I just wanted to make sure it's discussed. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, oh, I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, that, an educational tool. I love it. I love that. that. And it also will um, make um, our staff aware of when yes. um, these um, holidays slash celebrations or days of recognition for whatever religion um, that you um, right. that you're part of. Um, that it's, you know, it's listed so um, we're sensitive to those dates and our staff is sensitive um, to our students who, who celebrate and recognize those days. Um, so we, we're very sensitive to um, giving tests, um, you know, homework assignments, presentations, those kind of things. Uh, and also it allows our principals to know um, and our deans at the high school if a student needs a waiver uh, for a day that's missed because uh, of um, something that they recognize um, and hold dear, um, then it just helps us as a district to be more inclusive, obviously. So, do so unfortunately, we can't control when they give MCAS because I know that is sometimes during sensitive times for some of our students, and that unfortunately is not something we have State. control of, but internal tests and, um, you know, things like that for uh, we can control that. All right. Do we need? Do you need action no, from I this body on the cultural calendar? Nope. Okay. All right. So we have a motion on the floor, properly seconded. Is there any further discussion or question before? All right. All right. So. Um, oh wait. Where do you want to have to do roll? Where, calls where does anymore? Easter fit in this? Easter is that a federal holiday? Well, yeah. I think. Sure. Is it a federal holiday? I don't know. Yeah, it's not a federal holiday. That would be on the cultural calendar, then. The, right, the we'll put that on the cultural, cultural calendar, because, yeah, it wouldn't okay. be on yeah, here. It's not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't get a day off. For <laughs> <laughs> All 
Okay. All right. So um, we don't need a roll call anymore. So um, all in favor? Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Um, all right. There's no other business for policy. Okay. Uh, we're at adjournment. Motion to adjourn somebody? Motion to adjourn. All right, motion to adjourn by Mr. Minicello, properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. All in favor? All right, we're adjourned.